presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Minnesota. City of Chicago is one of the great sports towns in America, and right now Chicago has a team on the north side with the best record in the National League, and the team on the south side has the best record in the American League. Tonight, the first of three between the Twins and the Chicago White Sox. A lot has changed around Ricky Nolasco in the Twins rotation. He's been their best starter this year. Matt Latos, Latos one of several outstanding starters for the White Sox so far this year. And we welcome you to the south side of Chicago in a day of turmoil for the Minnesota Twins. The 8 and 20 record, not satisfactory for you fans, not satisfactory for the front office. So some changes have been made. Certainly have been, and it's uh, like Paul Molitor said, it's to help this team get on track. They're searching for it. John Ryan Murphy was sent out to uh, Rochester today, along with uh, Ryan O'Rourke, J.R. Graham, and uh, Darren Mastriani was brought back up with Juan Santano and Irvin Santana reinstated from the DL. He will pitch tomorrow's game here at U.S. Cellular. And a couple of relief pitchers put on waivers. There may be more changes tomorrow and the assumption is that unless the Twins play better baseball, even more changes will be forthcoming as the Twins hope to recover from a terrible start. They have the worst record in the American League. The White Sox have the best record in the American League largely because of some outstanding starting pitching and the Twins We'll get a full view of it this weekend. More on that in a moment. Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. By Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. It 
feels like summertime in the south side of Chicago. And tonight, the opener between the Twins and the Chicago White Sox. And the Twins facing a White Sox starting staff that has been outstanding, as is the case with the Cubs on the north side. 18 wins from the starting pitchings. They're uh, doing it with outstanding starting pitching and are supplemented by a really nice bullpen as well as we welcome you back to U.S. Cellular Field. And a lot of the starters for the White Sox are uh, familiar names and faces, but there's one newcomer, Matt Latos, whom the Twins will face tonight, who's been outstanding. In fact, all three starters that the White Sox are sending at the Twins in this series have uh, been very, very good. Yeah, the big three for the White Sox, and the Twins are going to see all three of them in this series. Matt Latos taking the mound today. He's 4-0. Uh, sales unbelievably off to a good start. And then Quintana will pitch on Sunday and combine their 14-1 with 90 strikeouts. So these guys are getting the job done. I think it's because of a better defensive team that the White Sox are putting on the field. But the Twins certainly are going to have their hands full with this team. In Don't expect that the Twins lineup is going to score too many runs against Matt Latos. That'll put a little extra burden on Ricky in Alaska. Well, Ricky, you know, he, he hasn't lost yet. That's the good news. And he has been the most consistent starter for the Twins. And really one pitch away from really having a good game his last time out, that pitch a home run ball that uh, made his numbers look a lot worse than they really are. Castellanos hit the final pitch of the game for an Alaska uh, as a three-run home run. The Twins hoping to get production from Joe Maurer. He's reached in every game this year. Typically hits very well here on the south side of Chicago. I love playing in Chicago. I love the city. Uh, you know, and the, and, the, and the park's been updated. It's nice, too. Small ballpark, uh, not for pitchers. Keep the ball down. Not a big fan of that field. Uh, don't know why. I get the backdrop kind of throws me off a little bit. Actually, I, I, that's one of my favorite places to play. Um, it's a great hitter's park, and uh, I always like to silence some of those south siders. Well, the South Siders silenced the Twins in the three game series at Target Field. The White Sox swept the Twins, and in the series, the Twins never so much as had a lead. Low scoring games, the White Sox won them all, and Paul Molitor hoping that uh, the shakeup on the roster will lead to better play. Menard's batting order, minus Brian Dozier, who's got a little bit of a hamstring issue on the right side. The hope is he'll be back in, in the lineup tomorrow. So tonight, Santana Nunez Maurer, Sano Plouffe Park, 
Arceus, Suzuki, and Escobar. And the Twins will face the right-hander, Matt Latos. He uh, has been a very pleasant surprise, I think. Uh, they expected good things out of him, but uh, maybe even getting more than they expected, 4-0 this year with a 1-8-4 ERA, making his sixth start. And uh, he loves pitching here at U.S. Cellular. A little conference between the third base umpire, Brian Knight, first base umpire, Bill Miller, about something. And I have no idea what this is about, but we've got a bit of a delay. I'm guessing it's something grounds related. Tarp is covered. Todd Tishner behind the plate. Miller is the crew chief. Holberg at second, Knight at third. And so we will have a little bit of a delay here. The uh, Cubs, as we mentioned, Paul Molitor given, uh, being given an explanation. And we understand there's something going on in the crowd behind the White Sox dugout. We don't know if it's a medical emergency or what have you. So they're tending to that right above the camera there. The uh, Cubs last night opened up a series against the Washington Nationals while last night the White Sox ended a series with the Boston Red Sox and as uh, odd as it might seem there were four first place teams playing here in Chicago last night and now Robin Ventura will come out and it would appear that a fan is in a, some a distress behind the uh, camera well there and so we're going to wait and see what the uh, remedy is for that. Very unusual way to start a game, but uh, must be enough of a distraction over there that they want to make sure that everything's taken care of the best that they can. The one thing we do know is that we couldn't ask for a nice oh my good in Chicago. We like were all given the up. years that I've come to <laughs> Chicago. We've had warm days, but they usually had wind and we've had cool days that usually involve wind. but to have a nice evening with very little wind it, it just continues from our series in Houston where the weather was beautiful. We had extraordinary weather there and we have it here. Uh, so weather wise this has been a great road trip and in terms of wins and losses and that's all the fans truly care about. Uh, uh, it has been very disappointing to the point where the twins are in a state of flux with the roster. And the Northland Ford defense for the White Sox. Melky Cabrera in left, Austin Jackson in center, Adam Eaton in right. Todd Frazier's been a great addition to the infield. So is Brett Laurie, Tyler Saladino at short, Jose Abreu at first, and Deonna Navarro behind the plate. Alex Avila, who was signed from the Detroit Tigers as a free agent, is on the disabled list with a hamstring injury. The delay was for a fan being helped uh, carried from the field on a stretcher through the uh, camera well so there was uh, access to the field needed for that so that's why the delay now we're ready to go Danny Santana will lead things off Eduardo Nunez Joe Maurer the batters here in the first inning against Matt Latos and the first pitch outside ball one Latos pitched against the twins at target field in April six innings one earned run on April 14th and of course a win in the process. Latos is one of those guys that's not going to blow you away with any high heat or anything but he is deceiving a little bit his fastball you see there at 92 91 on the first pitch he throws a breaking ball and a changeup so he's a guy that will change speeds and mix the ball around the strike zone and try to get you off balance. One and one. And now two and one. Latos three years with Cincinnati. Started last year with Miami, went to the Dodgers, went to the Angels, and all in all had an awful year last year. The White Sox were able to get him for one year and three million dollars. Three and one now to Santana. There is this in his last start, as good as he's been. In his last start, he had a rough one against the Orioles. Gave up 11 hits in five innings, four earned runs, and a couple of home runs. Three and one to the Twins' leadoff batter. Santana may have chased three and two. He's a guy that doesn't have the real good bend in his back to finish the ball off. A lot like Phil Hughes 
only more overhand than Phil. And the balls are going to tend to be up if he misses at all. High pop up behind first. Lori puts it away and Santana's retired one away. And that'll bring up Eduardo Nunez. Nunez getting the start at second base and in the second spot of the batting order when Trevor Plouffe came off the disabled list. Paul Molitor said he was going to try to find a way to keep Nunez's bat in the lineup since he's consistently hit all year long. And when Brian Dozier came up with a bit of a hamstring strain in his first at bat in Houston two nights ago, it was a perfect opportunity to give Dozier a day off and put Nunez in his spot. Strike on the outside corner. I think it's fair to say that Nunez is probably a little bit stronger on the left side, on shortstop, third base side of the infield than he is at second base. Uh, he's got a stronger arm for that role, but in this case, he's Paul Mahler just trying to get the best bat in the lineup that he can. And Eduardo Nunez has played some second base. He has filled in for Brian Dozier in the past. One and one. Strike call with Nunez leaning into the pitch and then having to push his hands back to avoid being hit. It's one and two. We've seen managers do it in advance of an off day, and the Twins hope it's nothing more than giving Dozier an extra day tonight after the off day yesterday, and hopefully the hamstring will feel much better by tomorrow. It's a chopper back to Lathos. Two down. That'll bring up Joe Maurer and tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Chris Fuller's Life. The most consecutive games reaching base to start a season. Ken Herbeck still holds the record, but Maurer, so often, Jack in his first or second plate appearance, extends his streak. We'll see what he does here in the first. It's pretty been it's been a pretty impressive streak for Joe Maurer, and he has probably the best average against Matt Latos. Now a lot of these guys. Haven't seen him very often because he was in the National League with the Reds. Will Maurer in that first time facing him went one for two, so at 500 against Matt Latos. Latos gave up just three hits to the Twins over his six innings. Strike two. Overall speed pitches, Maurer taking. with a 6.30 on base percentage in the first inning. One and two. And when he's fallen behind 0 and 2, it's pretty much a toss of the coin whether the count will get to 3 and 2. Teams get ahead of him and then it's like they, they try to get him to chase and good years, bad years, Joe's never been one to expand the strike zone too much. That's crazy. You just talked about his numbers in the first inning. The problem with the Twins is the guys in front of them haven't gotten on enough. Yeah. They're not setting the table for Joe. Into the shift with the shortstop Saladino lined up almost behind the bag. And Latos has a 1 2 3 first inning. Ricky Nolasco takes the mound for the Twins when we come back.
lost the season series to the Twins finished seven games behind them in the standings and Robin Ventura felt a little bit of heat last year and now everybody loves Robin Ventura and the White Sox again because they're winning 19 wins already for Chicago. Here's the Menards batting order for tonight's series open. Adam Eaton leading off then Austin Jackson Jose Abreu Todd Frazier Melky Cabrera Brent Laurie Avisail Garcia Deanna Navarro Tyler Saladino and a first pitch strike from Ricky Nolasco. Numbers for Ricky this year has yet to lose a ball game. Had some pretty impressive averages against him in the lineup tonight. There's five guys in the lineup that are near 400. Abreu, Cabrera, Garcia, Lori, and Navarro all hitting at or above 400. Breaking ball around the plate, and it's two and one. Eaton is off to a great start, not just at the plate, but in the field with the acquisition of Austin Jackson. Eaton's become a right fielder and a very good one. Tap to the right side, and Nunez has the easiest play a second baseman can have. One down. That'll bring up Austin Jackson. The Twins out of the field with Arcia in left, Danny Santana in center, and Miguel Sano in right. Bluff, Escobar, Nunez, Mauer, the infielders, and Kurt Suzuki behind the plate. Again, Paul Molitor kind of forcing Oswaldo Arcia to be playing because he's hitting a lot better than Eddie Rosario, so he's out and left. Everybody else pretty much the same except for Nunez playing second. I think the message, several messages probably, but one of them to the players, based on the roster moves made, uh, patience has run out. And what the hope is. The ball lifted foul and out of play. That the players will have run out of patience well, as well. I don't. I, I think the real message is we're not going to allow complacency to set in. That you have got to realize we're not going to accept this. This is not where the Minnesota Twins want to be. You know, they, they can say that verbally, but they've got to feel that inside of themselves. And uh, by making the changeups, the changes that they've made. And maybe more to come. It's just a reminder to everybody that they could be next. Nobody's immune to this. Strike over the inside corner, two and two. And if you're Eddie Rosario and you're off to a slow start in your first full year, time to get it going because, as you said, you might be next. Darren Mastroani is here. Two guys that weren't here Tyler Duffy to right. his left. Check swing, and now it's three and two. The veteran Jackson signed late with the White Sox. They were looking for a center fielder, and again, that moved uh, Adam Eaton to right field, and everything has worked out well. I figure Jackson eventually will start swinging the bat better than he has so far this year. Full count. And inside, Nolasco issues a walk, puts a man aboard for a brave. I, I just really believe in. Having solid defense as your number one priority in baseball team, and that's what the White Sox have done here. Austin Jackson, we just talked about it, not getting off the kind of start that they had hoped him to, but defensively, he plays every day. He does the things you're supposed to out there in the outfield every day, and what he can bring offensively is a plus because guys like Abreu and Todd Frazier, the guy on deck, are going to mop up some of the. Stuff that uh, you know other guys aren't aren't hitting well at this time of year. Abreu goes after a pitch up high, a fastball, one strike. Abreu's number is pretty modest, yet he's driven in 19 runs, hitting just 243. He's eight for three for eight lifetime against Ricky Nolasco at a 375 clip. Side corner. Those numbers accumulated while Nolasco was suffering through two awful seasons. His first two years with the Twins, injuries played a role. We know that. But Nolasco, at no point, put together the type of month or so that he's put together this year. He's given the Twins a chance to win every time out. Swing and a miss, and Abreu is gone on three pitches. That was a good breaking ball right there. A good sequence of pitches for Ricky. He went away, he came back in and then he dropped the hook down in the zone, got him to expand right there. So he pitched Abreu really well in that series. Kurt Suzuki doing a good job of keeping that ball in front of him. The shortest start for Nolasco was his last start. 
But he had a good game going until his last pitch was hammered into the seats by Nick Castellanos, a three run home run that tied the game. Here's Todd Frazier. And Frazier, a big uh, acquisition when you acquire an all star in his prime, which is what Frazier's been. His first all star game uh, was at Target Field two years ago. His ball wrapped to short. Dropped by Escobar and too late to get the force at second. Another error for the Twins, and there have been too many of those for Escobar, his fifth error in the team's 20th. We talk a lot, and you know, I'm not I'm not pointing fingers at Escobar, whether it's Escobar or somebody else making an error, but early in the ball game. A guy makes a pitch, he gets the ball hit on the ground, and he expects to walk to the dugout. His inning should be over. So every pitch from this point on is something that shouldn't have to happen. And nobody feels worse than Eduardo Escobar about that right now. But unfortunately, Ricky Nolasco is going to have to reload and try to focus and get out another guy that's hit him very well in Melky Cabrera. Nine for 22 with a home run. Hitting over 300 from this side of the plate. Nolasco starts him down low, ball one. A one out walk, a two out error. And now 2 0 oh to Cabrera. Had an awful game against the Red Sox. They lost it, but they took nine walks, and none of the nine guys who walked scored. So right away here in the first inning, Alasco's walked one, might be on the verge of walking another. And a strike at the knees, three and one. He certainly doesn't want to. Put on Cabrera here. He's got to go after him. You don't want to have bases loaded to start the game. That's the left center field. And it'll score one. And it will score two. A double by Cabrera. And the air leads to at least two unearned runs. Just what I was talking about there. You forced to throw extra pitches to a guy that's Hit you very well. Melky gets to a very good hitter's count and then gets the fastball out over the plate. And he just goes with it. He doesn't try to do too much. Hits the ball in the gap. He doesn't run all that well, but Danny Santana and Oswaldo Arcia have to run that ball down in the alley. And Todd Frazier lumbers around second base and third base to score from first. And now Brent Laurie. Wherever he's played lately, Laurie has hit Twins pitching well. He brings a 14 game hitting streak against Twins pitching into this at bat. Off the plate, ball one. But Laurie was with the Toronto Blue Jays for most of his career, and he went back and forth from second to third. Played mostly third base, but they believed, the organization believed, that his true position was second base. And now coming from Oakland where he played third base he's playing second base because Todd Frazier has anchored the third place spot so there's a lot of people think Brett Laurie is most comfortable now playing where he is for the Chicago White Sox at second base one and one to Laurie and now one and two. the 23rd pitch of the inning by Nalaska. Swing. The inning should have been ended by about what pitch 15. The air has given the White Sox two runs. 
a ground ball to Escobar was actually the 14th pitch thrown by an Alaska. So at least 10 more here in the first inning. And there's a strike. The inning ends. For the Twins, they have allowed two more unearned runs, now 17 on the season. And the White Sox take a quick 2 0 lead. Heading into the second here in Chicago. After the ugly loss in Houston, Paul Molitor said he hopes every guy on this roster is taking that 8 20 record personally and really looking at what they did to get this team there. So today I asked if these roster moves today were a way to send a message to his team. Now, Paul Molitor said it doesn't have anything to do with sending a message, it's just about doing what's right for this team. And he hopes that it doesn't take roster moves to get his team motivated to make it through the next 130 games. Now, he also did admit that he knows he probably made things a bit uncomfortable and tense out there. Case in point, Casey Fien and Tommy Malone, who are in the bullpen and dressed in the uniform of the team that just put them on waivers. Guys, tough situation. Well, thank you, Audra. And it's uh, curious how word leaked about that. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because it is a weird situation. And it used to be that you could put players on waivers, and then when the waiver period expires, as it will tomorrow at I believe one o'clock Central Time in the afternoon, then uh, things would become public. It's a strike on the outside corner, two and one. But Casey Fien and Tommy Malone are very much a part of this team. But tomorrow at this time, Tommy Malone could be property of the Los Angeles Angels, just to pick a team out of thin air. There's a pitch up three and one. Yeah, I think it's important to remind fans that over the course of a career, most players are put on waivers more than once. Everybody goes on waivers, but teams keep it quiet. And a lot of times it's just to see what kind of interest is out there for that player and whether or not they've over evaluated maybe or they're just trying to see what their value might be on a market. But typically players never hear about it and uh, it goes unnoticed. Now in this case it's my understanding that if a team claims either one of them that they're gone. Yes. They're with yep. that team and they can't pull them off waivers like they can later on. So no fouls it back. That's the difference between revocable waivers and the irrevocable waivers. So no with the foul it's three and two. Plouffe and Park will follow. Up back and out of play. All right, I didn't just pull the Angels out of thin air. They lost the, their ace starter today. News came that Garrett Richards will almost certainly need Tommy John surgery. He's going to get a second opinion, but that's our Sanford Health injury report. The Angels are going to really miss a guy they were really counting on this year. It's hard to replace an ace, no question about it. 
This guy's been a workhorse and a very good pitcher for the Angels. So they're going to be out looking for somebody. They've got to get back in the race themselves. Three and two to Sano leading off the Twins second inning. Clobbered to the left field corner and foul. Sano battling and we've seen Sano's batting average fairly steadily climb. Still uh, with three home runs he's gone a couple weeks without one. Ninth pitch of this at bat coming up. If you do the math at home that means there have been three two strike fouls. Those are pitches that you can't miss at the big league level. You're a kid that can hit the ball so far that it looked like he took a, a swing that was a little more intense than he needed to. A ball that all he has to do is make contact. See Jordan Zimmerman, the Twins have seen him. Matt Latos is making a second start against the Twins this year. Seen Walker of the Mariners yet, but so far those three pitchers doing a great job pitching much better than they did last year. Here is Trevor Plouffe. Strike on the outside corner. Trevor still looking for his first hit since coming off the disabled list a few days ago. Oh, and two. Of course, have not had very good success bringing pitchers over from the National League. An assortment of names uh, have uh, come through the twin starting rotation: Correa, Pelfries, Asco, so on and so forth. But uh, here, Latos seems to have stepped into essentially a different league, although he pitched briefly with the Angels last year and had uh, great early success. One and two. Given what he did last year at three different stops, a lot of people in baseball are surprised yeah. that he's pitched as well as he has. There's certain things that kind of are hard to predict, and Latos having a good year, a pleasant surprise for the White Sox, but a lot of people in baseball just surprised, period, that he's doing as well as he is early. Well, they needed a right hander. They started the year with four lefties in the rotation. They've since uh, Designated for assignment, John Danks. They still have Rodon, Quintana, and of course Sale. Two and two to Trevor Plouffe. Tapper left side. Frazier is an easy play. Two down. That'll bring up Young Hall Park. Very little has gone right for the Twins this year, but so far it looks like this is going to be a very nice signing for the Minnesota Twins in his last 13 games. He's Hitting the ball about as well as he did in Korea. You know that's the thing. His average is slowly climbing because he's getting hits more often. Uh, the home runs have come at opportune times. We've seen his tremendous power to all fields, but the average is something that we both believe that it is going to continue to climb because he's starting to understand the level here in the major leagues. And uh, once he gets to know the pitchers and see him more than once, which he will in his own division. I think that'll all help him. And down and away, two and zero. Oh. Well, a couple of years ago, different country, of course, but Abreu had a big transition coming from Cuba, and it took him just a little while to get going. But eventually, he was the American League Rookie of the Year. The ball hit hard to left, and the base hit. Park with a solid single with two outs in the second inning. Keeping it going, it's kind of swing we talk about with him. You know, he's, he's, the knock on him was that he might have a tough time adjusting to the higher speed and the fastballs. But Latos is blowing you away. That was a fastball down that Hart kept his shoulder head in. Still able to make that contact out in front of the plate and hit it crisply in the left field. In his last three years in Korea, South Korea. 
Park had on base percentages in the 430s. Here is Oswaldo Arcia. And up and in ball one. You said it. Oswaldo Arcia, who started the year on the bench, has hit his way into the lineup on a more regular basis because Eddie Rosario has stumbled out of the gate. Yeah, and that ugly game the other night in Houston, he was two for three with a walk, so he, he got on base, he did his job, he just wasn't getting a lot of help. Arcia just part time duty so far. It's evolved into more full time duty, 55 at bats. Team's hitting 242. Arcia is hitting 273. That is a check swing, and Park will go to second base. No swing. It'll be a 3 0 count to Arcia. The other thing, I'm sorry, Dick, the other thing that I think is impressive with Arcia, in, in the last couple weeks, we've seen him. Cut down his strikeouts a little bit and a willingness to at least try to make contact when he's behind in counts to fight that pitcher and try to put the ball in play. There have been some ugly swings, but at least he's trying and he's gotten a few hits with some of those yeah, ugly his, swings. His second hit in Houston the other night was just a little try to make contact, maybe fight a pitch off, and he hit a flare and a left. 3 0. Oh. Taking all the way, he takes a strike down and away, 3 and 1. Speaking of Rosario, it was a year ago today he made his major league debut in grand fashion, homering on the first pitch. Check this swing, and Park is safe at second. He would have gotten back and uh, Saladino hung on to the ball. So Navarro trying to pick Park off, and Arcia takes first base with a walk. In case you're wondering why he would throw after a base on balls, Park is still in play. If he would have picked him off, he would have been right. out. Here is Suzuki. The White Sox got a big two out hit from Melky Cabrera to take a 2 nothing lead. And now Suzuki will try to provide one for the Twins, hitting just 196. Down and away ball one. It's been said for 150 years that good teams are strong up the middle. So at this juncture, roughly a month into the season, you look at where the Twins have been up the middle. Byron Buxton's not on the team anymore. He's in Rochester. And behind the plate, it hasn't worked out very well at all for the Twins. Call strike one and one. Suzuki's hitting under 200. John Ryan Murphy was hitting below 100, and the Twins sent him out. Juan Centeno is now the backup catcher. 25 pitches is inning for Latos. Twins trying to make something out of this two out rally. And down and away, two and one. Well, when you talk about strong up the middle, most people are referring to defensively. Right. Buxton, a plus out there. He's a guy that the Twins would love to have come back to shore up that center field defensively. Danny Santana's done a great job, but he would probably be better suited in one of the corner positions in the outfield. Ball hit to the right field corner. Down for a hit. Rounding second and scoring is part. Suzuki with a two out single, and the Twins are on the board. Good for Kurt right there. Went with the pitch. Eaton does a good job of getting to that corner, and that's going to have to keep Arce over at third base. Don Cooper coming out to take a conversation with uh, Latos. You see this pitch again. Kurt Suzuki going with the pitch. That will score Young Ho Park. Wins on the board with their first run. Quick trip to the mound by Don Cooper. And Latos retired the first five batters, but now Parks two out single, a wild pitch, a walk and a single have gotten the Twins on the board. The tying run 90 feet away.
Time now for greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T Mobile. We'll look at some notes from this weekend series. And the White Sox starters have 15 wins this season. Most in the American League. Twin starters have just three. And Joe Maurer is the only player to have reached in every game. And Todd Frazier off to a great start in his first year in the American League. Here's Escobar. Takes down an in ball one, and what we've seen from Latos, Latos first time through the batting order, he's fallen behind almost all the hitters. Yeah, kind of opposite of his last start against the Twins. He, he usually pounds the strike zone, and you mentioned it. His very last start had a kind of rough go. And maybe that's continuing here tonight. And now up and away, two and zero. Oh. He's a guy that. Throws right over the top. Very few pitchers get their arm up that high. He's coming right over the top, and uh, that will put a lot of pressure on his shoulder. Most pitching coaches prefer you to be at about 90 degrees with your elbow. And three and zero to the number nine batter, Santana on deck. 30 pitches this inning, the most Latos has thrown in any inning this year. Santana on deck. He'd love to come up with the bases loaded. And a strike. Three and one. And a liner. Nice play by Saladino and a low throw. A one hopper to Abreu retires Escobar with Saladino cutting the ball off behind the second base bag. A nice play to end the inning. The Twins get one but leave two. That's what defense does. Fox Sports North. Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by CenturyLink. Switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprismtv.com. After being retired for the last out of the inning, some attention paid Eduardo Escobar as he ran down the line. He did something new. one would hope not. Well, right there. You know, it sure looked like a hamstring uh, strain <laughs> just by the way he reacted. But he's in the ball game still playing it short. Strike one to Abasail Garcia. How frustrating it must be for Eduardo Escobar. He makes an error that causes the first two runs to score. And then he hits the ball perfect and can't buy a base hit. And Garcia starts it off 
for the White Sox with a solid hit to left. Sometimes we talk about shifting when uh, there is an exaggerated shift, but the shift paid off for the White Sox there. They had Saladino playing almost behind the second base bag, and he was able to go a couple of steps and make a nifty pickup on that first hop of the soft line drive and throw him out. Here is Deonor Navarro. You mentioned Alex Avila, their regular catcher, is nursing a sore hamstring. That's part of it. You know, typically, you would see Avila against the right handers, but Navarro's number is very good against Ricky Nolasco. He's 7 for 15 at 467 batting average, so that's one of the reasons that Robin Ventura has him in the lineup. 1 and 0. Oh. To Deonor Navarro. Again, last start, Ricky Nolasco's pitch count got up there. One mistake late in the game really cost him a good outing, but the pitch count was up to the point where he might have been taken out anyway. And with the error in the first inning, the pitch count kind of creeped up. Now a leadoff man falling behind Navarro. Which count keeps climbing. Three and one to Navarro. And on the outside corner. One of the issues the Twins pitching staff has had is decreased velocity. With Phil Hughes and others. In Alaska's case, he's healthier, and we've seen fastballs at 93 miles per hour, harder than he's thrown in his first two years with the team. Full count Garcia goes with the pitch tapped to the right side. Rodriguez has it out of hour one away, and Navarro goes to second. Or Garcia goes to second. And before Saladino is at bat, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with the all new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app, take Fox Sports North and Twins Baseball with you wherever you go. Roger Martin, Jack Morris, Dick Bramer here. Gorgeous weather in Chicago. We know it's been awfully nice back home in the 80s in the Twin Cities area. High 80s. Yes. There's Saladino, the runner at second and one down. To right field. And down for a hit. And Sano is able, I think, to decoy. Garcia a little bit, at least he had to hold up towards second base. First to third with one away. They really had Sano playing well over towards the line deeper in right field. That ball hung up there long enough that you thought maybe it would be caught. It wasn't exactly hitting the spot that you thought would lead to a base hit. You can see way over in the corner here where Miguel Sano started. And then he had a run far enough that he figured it's best not to dive, keep the ball in front of him. So no, after the play, held his glove up into the lights as if he may have lost sight of the ball uh, as well. First and third, one down, and Adam Eaton, the batter. Tough guy to double up. So Alaska will be looking for a strikeout or a pop up here. Down and in, ball one. He has grounded into three double plays. Alaska, of course, though, more of a fly ball pitcher, not known as a ground ball pitcher. Hasn't gotten a ground ball double play yet this year. You mentioned it. This is a great opportunity for a strikeout. I don't necessarily think that strikeout is the greatest thing because it adds so many pitches. But there are times during the course of the game that 
you need a strikeout and you're a good, pretty good contact hitter, but uh, this would be a great opportunity to get that strikeout. But a strikeout for every eight at bats. Now the last go wants a different baseball again. Were you uh, kind of persnickety with baseballs? Persnickety, particular. Um, I wanted a ball that felt good. If, if the ball felt bigger, if the seams were flat, I wanted. I, I tried to get a, a seam that felt like it was raised a little bit. I didn't want it too high. So I guess yeah. I think we all are particular about how we want our baseball. Now they throw them out every pitch. Now, so you can. <laughs> I would have to grab everybody. I mean, it would be a delay of game for me because of the way the game is played. <laughs> but literally, I'd have to step off the mound and rub every ball up. I want a little tacky feel. And the only way they can do that is to spit in your hand and rub it. Hit and run, single to left. And the runner, Saladino, will go to third. Here comes the throw to second, and Eaton is out at second. But the runs comes in from third. Two runs score on the play with Eaton trying to. Stretch a single into a double, but alertly Joe McEwing yeah. sent the runner, and it's a two-run hit. I think that was a risk worth taking for Adam Eaton there because it created an opportunity for Joe McEwing to send the runner, and they'll take two runs for an out right there. See Eaton on this replay, a fastball up and away, and he just throws the bat head at it and barrels it up to left field. Garcia scores. Saladino would have been held at third, but the throw went to second base. Nunez records the out, but the run scores. You could see McEwing motioning Saladino home. Immediately after Arcia looked toward second base. In other words, they anticipated the throw going to second. And with the runner going with the pitch, it's a really nice base running play for the White Sox. Two down, but two more runs already in, and here's Austin Jackson. Strike called one and one. It's the little things that can be done. Good base running right there. Defense, good base running. I mean, little things add up to a team getting momentum and really having confidence. White Sox have swagger right now. They feel good about their ball club, especially at home. And then you push the right buttons of the manager too. Robin Ventura sent the runner. If he doesn't send the runner, Escobar standing right where the ball is hit. He fields the first hop and probably turns a double play and the Twins are out of the inning. Two hopper to third. Kloof. Over the first, that ends the inning. Two in the first, two in the second. And the White Sox have a 4-1 lead.
last year the states of Missouri and Texas were kind of the centers of uh, baseball good baseball and this year it's the city of Chicago my goodness White Sox with uh, 19 wins already the Cubs have yet to lose back to back games this year and won the first two with the Nationals. Hannah will lead off the third for the Twins. It was at Wrigley Field last night, and uh, boy, they've got everybody's attention. Less so down here. Uh, when the Cubs are winning, some people refuse to acknowledge what's <laughs> happening, either good or bad, here on the South Side. Well, but, I uh, think they've got a pretty nice Friday night crowd. Yep. Yeah. One and zero to Santana, and now two and zero. And again, Latos continues to fall behind batters. What a great atmosphere it was last night. Two really good teams, the Nationals and the Cubs. Sellout crowd. Cool spring evening. There's a strike two and one. I'm sure there's plenty of people that did the doubleheader National League game, American League game yeah. in Chicago here today. It's rare that the Cubs and Sox play in the same evening or same day. Three and one to Danny Santana. Eduardo Nunez, Joe Maurer will follow. I should add at home. Right. Play a lot of the same way. They just don't do it at home. And Santana draws a walk. And the Twins are seeing Latos in a completely different uh, mode than he was in at Target Field. Carsoup.com trivia question. All time in the history of time, which Twins player has the highest career batting average at U.S. Cellular Field? Give everybody a hint. Will Sellier has been around here for about 20 some years, I think. So it wouldn't be any of the 65. Right. right. It wouldn't be Carew, for instance, who seemed to always hit well in Chicago at the other ballpark. Here's Nunez. Santana takes off right away. And he's out. Great throw from Navarro right there, getting rid of the ball quickly and then throwing a perfect strike. See, Latos doesn't have much of a leg kick. He gets rid of the ball quickly. Get Laurie at second base. And Danny Santana looked like he got a great jump, but Navarro throws a perfect strike down to second base. 1 0 oh to Nunez. A little bit of a delay as the Twins contemplated a challenge, but the replay showed that Santana got tagged in the chest before his hands got to the bag. Tapper foul, one and one. And he has it a one hopper back to Latos, his first time up. Over the Twins dugout, out of play. Well, you pitched in both the old Kaniski and in this ballpark as well. What were the differences? I think the old ballpark had a lot more character. It was an awful field. <laughs> it was always water in the outfield. Well, drilled to the right field corner. And he makes wow. a great running catch in the corner. Adam Eaton has played lights out right field for the White Sox this year. He's made two good plays tonight. One on Suzuki single. And a tremendous running catch in the corner. If you talk about that in the pregame, you talk about what Adam Eaton has done, and it doesn't really surprise me for this simple reason. Playing center field sometimes it's very difficult to get a read off the bat. You don't know if the ball's coming at you over your head, whether you should charge or not. I think it's a lot easier to get a read playing at one of the corner positions, especially with balls to your left or right. He got a great read on that ball. He's got very good speed and he just outran the baseball. Two down. And here is Bauer taking strike one. He's already got six assists in right field in the first month of the season. Strike basically, but I guess what we're trying to say, although he has plenty of outfield experience, what the White Sox have seen from Eaton in right field is what the Royals saw a couple years ago when they put Alex Gordon out there. Gordon immediately took the left field. New position. Like he'd spent his entire professional career in left field. 
And they're saying here in Chicago that Eaton in right field is so much better an outfielder than he was when he was in center. Well, sometimes you, you get off to a good start and confidence grows and you just got a feeling that you fit there. You belong there. Two strikes to Maurer. And oh boy. For the second time in this ball game, Joe Maurer has batted with nobody on base and two outs. That has been one of the uh, issues for the Twins. Two and two. Situations like this and a check swing strike three. Lead off walk, but the twins don't take advantage and trail four to one. Sure won't come as a surprise to many of you who saw Escobar's first at bat. He appeared to a tweak something running to first, so Escobar leaves the ball game. Nunez goes to short. Santana in to second base. And Rosario now in center field. Here's Escobar, and about three quarters of the way there. I'd be very surprised if the Twins didn't tell us later that it was a hamstring strain. So the Twins with a four-man bench. That's the good news with just 12 pitchers but now Rosario in center field. And Abreu lifts one high and deep to left. Garcia back and it is gone. A home run for Jose Abreu and it's 5 to 1. Abreu with great power and that was a no doubter. Tell right from the crack of the bat that that ball was going to leave the ballpark. Home run number five for Abreu. Watch the extension of this swing. Ball was down and away, but Abreu went and got it. And just total extension, ball out in front of his, in front of the plate where he made contact. Fifth home run allowed by an Alaska. And here's Tom Frazier. Swing and foul back. Frazier reached on the Escobar error that led to the two unearned runs in the first. So there are the Twins uh, defensively now with Nunez moving from second to short Santana from center to second and Rosario in the game he'll hit in Escobar spot. One and one to Frazier. Uh, 
Frazier before the game today and he can relate to what the Twins are going through. He suffered through a bad year last year with the Reds, particularly in the second half. Really enjoying his first season with the White Sox. Popped up. And then coming just beneath us. Well, Fraser having a couple different swings there. The third pitch that Ricky threw this inning, he brushed Frazier off the plate, got him to jackknife, and that set up these last two breaking balls where he hasn't had that same kind of swing. And that's what you have to do if you're a pitcher. And guys swing so hard sometimes, you've got to move their feet. Good sequence right there for Ricky. Frazier had one swing, and that was that first pitch of the at bat, and then Ricky just abused him after that. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball, blackout, and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Melky Cabrera made the Twins pay for their mistake in the first inning. A two run double to left center field. Strike one and then another pitch up and in. Up anyway. I don't know how in it was. It looked like it might have well, been over the inside. It, it, it accomplished something. It made him uncomfortable and moved his feet. I don't know where this next one's going to go, but sometimes it's good to double up with that kind of pitch. Move their feet a couple times and then that'll open up the outside part of the plate for you. The home run by Abreu and then going back to the home run he allowed to Castellanos. Why the foul. There were breaking balls on the outer half of the plate. And in Castellanos case it's almost like he was anticipating getting that pitch. Went out and got it and hooked it deep into the seats and left. That's why you have to keep him honest inside. Off the plate inside, down especially, move their feet occasionally. Foul back. You can see that that Guerrero did not have the same swing on that particular swing with the ball away that he did. He's looking middle half in now. Ricky got his attention. And uh, he was able to foul a fastball in, but the outer part of the plate may be open for him. They're going to go out there. Half swing and strike three. Back to back strikeouts after the Abreu home run. Not a real Brett Lord. Four strikeouts for him. Gloria strikeout to wrap up the first inning. Over the inside corner. Lori brings a lot of intensity. Good fashion statement with his mouth going. Breaking ball at strike two. It's like something you'd wear at Halloween. Yeah. Count Dracula. Tent is the word inside the mouth, but a couple <laughs> times uh, it's worn it outside his mouth. And a all third strike. Lori takes three. And the White Sox get one more on the Abreu home run. It's five to one.
Fox Sports North is presented by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. A good start for the White Sox and the Brayu home run, making it five to one. And again, the White Sox not only swept the Twins at Target Field earlier this year, the Twins never had a lead. Miguel Sano will lead off the fourth, middle of the Twins lineup. Sano, Plouffe, and Park will try to start a rally in the fourth. Park had a long, excuse me, Sano had a long at bat with Latos and finally struck out swinging. Pitches up, ball one. I bet you if you ask Latos right now, he would tell you that of his starts this year, he's had the poorest command tonight, and yet he's got a five to one lead. He had a clean third inning. I should say clean. He walked the lead off. Yeah. Man. That's not clean, but Navarro, his catcher, made a great throw to get Rick uh, Danny Santana trying to steal the base. So it ended up being a 1 2 3 inning. Sixth 2 0 count for Leto. Missed 2 and 1. They've got the shift on the left side for Miguel. And foul, two and two. So he's gotten his hits and gone some walks, but he knows he's in the lineup because of his power. And as long as this home run streak continues, he's going to be very frustrated. Home run less streak. So he's going to miss off speed pitch. Second time that Sano has struck out. That'll bring up Blue. Tomorrow, MLB on FS1 is back with two monster games featuring some of baseball's best players. The Rangers taking on the Tigers in a game you can only see on FS1. And the Nationals taking on the Cubs at Wrigley. The action begins at 11:30 Central on FS1, or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Blue for the grounder to third, his first time up. Third baseman Frazier back almost on the outfield grass. Plouffe bluffed a bunt with ball one. And a good bunt. Lagos wants to make the play and makes the play. Good strong throw from Matt Lagos over to Jose Abreu. He usually you'd prefer him to bare hand that ball. It was almost dead in the grass, but he fielded glove side and had to transfer the ball to his throwing hand. That took a few extra seconds. But a great throw and Trevor Proof, even though he laid down a very good bunt, does not have the speed to beat it out. Two down and now Byung Ho Park grounded a single with two outs in the second. Ended up scoring the twins run. Talked about Park and hey, when a guy hits over 50 home runs back to back years in whatever league, you, those are the numbers that catch your attention. On strike. And now a ball. But what we're starting to see is he's, you know, a very good uh, guy to uh, draw walks, hit for average, or at least he was over there with the on base percentages in the 430s. And another hit. Past a leaping Saladino and Park has two singles. That's what we're starting to see from Young Ho is multi hit games, and that's where that average starts creeping up. On base percentage gets a little bit better. Another solid hit. Marcia drew a walk his first time up. Park came around to score after two outs. And nobody on in front of him got the base hit. The Twins were able to figure out a way with a walk and a hit to score a park. Up and away, ball one. The walk to Arcia, his sixth of the year, there have been 24 strikeouts in 55 at bats. Field and deep and gone. Tremendous power to the opposite field. 
And Arcia cranks out a two run home run. Seems to be a ballpark that as Waldo Arcia likes to hit in. He's hit some bombs in this ballpark. And that one was a no doubter in the opposite field. We've seen hits to left field. We've seen home runs to left field. He has so far shown signs of maturing as a hitter using the whole field. And it helps, I suppose, when you've got this kind of power to the opposite field. Five to three. And the Twins have scored three runs after a park single with two out in two different innings. Now Suzuki takes down an away ball one. Suzuki drove in a run with a single to right. And the first of two good plays by Adam Eaton into the right field corner. And the second one saved a hit. The first one might have saved a run. Suzuki hit a ball down toward the right field corner and Eaton cut it off. And that held Arcee at third base. He never did come in to score. And if that ball had gotten by Eaton into the corner, Arcee would have scored. Right. Look at the point of contact for Oswaldo Arcia. Now that ball went to left field opposite, but look at how still his head was. The ball was out in front of the plate, even though it was away from him. And that was a no doubter. Suzuki with a sharp single to center. The Twins trying to show a little pushback here to what's been an ugly start to the game. Yeah, that's a good sign. Three solid hits after two outs. Matt Latos is now struggling a little with his command. That ball again up like the one to Arcia. Out over the plate. Here is Rosario, and we mentioned it was a year ago tonight that he jumped into the big leagues with both feet, hitting an opposite field home run in target field on the first pitch. And now suddenly here in the fourth inning, he represents the tying run. Very rough start for Rosario. And oddly enough, it hasn't been the strikeouts so much as just not making solid contact. Yeah, you just said four words that we've heard just too many times with Eddie up there. Swing and a miss. Yep. But I mean it's not great. 22 strikeouts. The ball headed towards center field. And Rosario beats out an infield hit despite a good effort by Laurie with the shift on. He was pulled over toward uh, the hole between. Abreu and himself along the right side, and Rosario hit it in a good spot. Gets an infield hit. He still runs well. Got down the line. Brett Laurie made a nice play there, but could not get enough on his throw. And Eddie was able to beat it out easily. Let's keep it rolling here. Two on now with two out. Rosario hitting for Escobar. We just received word that the injury was not a hamstring, but a left groin that was tweaked. Here is Santana. He has popped up to second and drawn a walk, tying run aboard. And an extra base hit here could to tie the game up. Swing and a miss. And again, Latos' last start didn't go well. Five innings, 11 hits, four earned runs, and now the Twins here in the fourth. Putting together a two out rally. Actually out hitting the White Sox six to five at this point. Well, you might survive it for a while, but we talked about Latos' lack of command and falling behind hitters. Eventually that's going to catch up with you, isn't it? I think he's just thrown too many pitches up, period. He's missed up, but he's also missed out over the plate up. Played one on one. Even that breaking ball was up. He's not following through and not bending his back and kind of stiff leg in that landing foot. He's got Carroll warming up in the Chicago bullpen here in the fourth inning. Popped up, backing out of play. Let's watch his livery. Just a Tiny little leg lift. Actually, bends over further than I thought he was. So 
six hits for the Twins, all of them with two outs. You know, Santana trying to keep the line moving here with the tying run at first and two away. Kirk talks about it all the time that pitchers have to stay back on their back leg, the one that makes contact with the rubber, and give their arm a chance to get caught up so that they can release the ball out in front of them. Lato's just a fraction of a second tardy. A strike three gets away from Navarro, and the throw to first just barely got in. So the inning ends on a striking. The Twins get a home run from Arcia with a man aboard and cut the White Sox lead in half. Talk about defense. Pretty nice little play by Deonor Navarro, uh, picking up a wild pitch and throwing out the speedy Santana to end the inning. Shows his strong throwing arm behind the plate. Got a little break there with the ricochet off the wall. Here's uh, Garcia taking down and away, and Alaska, who's not put up a zero yet, would like to put a, a few of them together here. Can here to try to jump back into the game. Wrap toward third. Cut off by Plouffe. Comes up firing. Nice play. Trevor Plouffe to his left. Retires Garcia one away. Kind of moving his arm around like he might have strained it there. But what he did well, not the quickest guy moving laterally, but what he did well was jump up quickly and get rid of that ball after he did knock it down. Awareness of the speed, and we're still uh, a little extra time from the last how quickly he gets up there. Here is Navarro, and he takes strike one. Navarro hit a ground ball to Nunez, then the second baseman on the second inning. Way out in front. If you're taking something off that curveball right there, Navarro way out in front, but a great location too, and it's the arm speed that makes that so effective. Big pull shift on for Navarro. Swings and misses, and Alaska with another strikeout. Struck out the side, albeit after the uh, Abreu home run, but two away quickly here in the fourth. And that'll bring up Saladino. Ricky has got his, he's had a lot of strikeouts recently. See, this is number six over the top, kept it down. 
box strikes presented by Don. Six strikeouts for an Alaska. An Alaska four ground ball outs and no fly ball outs yet. Here is Saladino singled and scored. His first time up. And an alert base running play by Saladino and alert coaching by Joe McEwing, scoring him on Eaton's single in the next at bat. Off the plate, one and one. Had better reasons to do this, but he put Saladino in the lineup on Italian Heritage Night. <laughs> Driven to right, Sano started in, now goes back and makes the catch on the edge of the track. An eight pitch inning as the White Sox go down one, two, three. I like deep dish pizza, it's good, but I like folding it. I like the I like New York style. I like the New York style pizza. Chicago. Chicago. Chicago style pizza. The only problem with the Chicago deep dish is I mean you could have one piece and it's your stuff. Deep dish, the more I feel like there's more food to eat. Uh, it just tastes better. It's kind of fluffier. I like it. Well, uh, I enjoy deep dish pizza here in Chicago. How about you? Are you a deep dish guy or a thin crust? I'm a thin crust. I figure deep dish is a loaf of bread with a little sauce. And it is filling just like Jepson's. Yeah, it is. Taste wise, they're both good. Who doesn't like pizza? Matt Latos had a 23 pitch fourth inning and then a very quick time in the dugout back out there. He took a little extra time to get out there. He didn't start his warm up tosses. Until there were 32 seconds left on the between innings clock. Here's a ball blasted to left center field. And that ball hits the base of the wall. And Nunez digging for second, and he is in with a first pitch double. And the Twins down five to one. Get their first hit with less than two out in an inning. You wonder if Latos had some issue there in between innings. Just like you said, he came out, didn't throw very many warm up pitches. And Nunez might have been aware of that, being the guy to lead off the inning. He's in the on deck circle taking his warm ups, looking for that first pitch out over the plate. This ball hits high off the wall. Melky Cabrera does a great job of fielding it position wise to get rid of that ball. Nunez has to hustle to get a lead off double. And now Maurer, 0 for 2, a ground ball to short and a check swing strikeout. Strike one over the inside corner. Both Latos and his catcher Navarro came out late, and he managed to squeeze in six warm-up tosses, but he didn't throw his first one until there were 32 seconds left in the time between innings. 
And Nunez pounces on the first pitch and hammers a double. And now Maurer with an 0 1 count. At the knees on two. And Matos has gotten ahead of Maurer 0 2 without Joe so much as swinging in all three at bats. He's taken two strikes in each of his at bats. to the left field corner Cabrera chasing it and making a fair ball catch and Nunez alertly goes to third and now Nunez is hurt an awkward head first slide and it looked like he did something to his left hand good play by the other corner outfielder going to the corner getting Mauer's deep fly ball long run from Melky Cabrera and he keeps his eye on the ball as he's going into no man's land there in the corner. You don't know if it's going to be the outfield wall or the sideline wall that you're going to run into, but he stays with it. Bounces off the wall. Great tag there by Nunez. And as he slides, he caught his left wrist, it looked like to me. Yeah. And kind of rolled it over. Shoulder didn't look like it went in well. So no takes up high. Infield is back. Twins need to get this run in. That's the advantage of the leadoff double, so Noah struck out twice. More activity in the White Sox bullpen. Lifted to right field and deep. Eaton going back and makes the catch at the wall. Tagging from third and scoring is Nunez, and it's five to four. Well, good base running by Nunez. And a good job from Sano right there and Maurer to move Nunez into scoring position. And the Twins will get one. Latos at 90 pitches. More than likely, this will be his last inning. That's why there's the activity now in the Sox. Good to see Nunez smile after doing something to his left arm or shoulder. And Sano nearly lifting one out to right center. But a sacrifice fly getting a run in, and now here's Ploof. Up and away, ball one. So that was Zach Putman. Two and oh. Well, the White Sox got four great starts from Latos, but now with the way he's pitched the last two games has been the way he pitched last year when he. Hop from team to team, three different teams. With a strike on the outside corner. Trevor 0 for 2, grounder to third, then he tried to bunt, and Latos made a nice play on it, 3 and 1, with Park on deck. Now if Latos could record this final out, it is the top of the fifth inning, that would qualify him. For a win, if the game stayed where it is, but I've got a lot of confidence that either of those things will happen. Fly to right, easy play for Eaton. He's completed five, but he's given back almost all of what was a four-run lead.
It's a 5 4 game. Ricky in Alaska delivers strike one to Adam Eaton. Pepsi fans of the game, Twins fans hoping for a come from behind win against a really good pitching staff. It was 5 to 1, now it's 5 to 4. Eaton, Jackson, and Abreu here in the fifth against Nolasco through just eight pitches and a 1, 2, 3, 4. That's a fair ball into the corner. Eaton can fly. And he'll fly around second. It's a nice throw, not in time, nor on target. It's a leadoff triple for Adam Eaton. You kind of knew that that ball, if it got stuck at all or ended up underneath that padding down the line, that Eaton was going to try for third. Just a question of how fast Sano could get to this ball. It kind of stays right there along the wall. And by the time Sano actually gets to throw the ball, Eaton had already rounded second base. What happened to the ball because it never carried. No. You know, Sano's trying to play the carom and it must have gotten pinned under the padding down there. The well, Twins bring the infield in here after the leadoff triple. The foul ball guy is sitting down in that general area. I don't know if it got trapped underneath him or not. Austin Jackson walked and scored in the first, hit a ground ball in the third. Getting the ball hit on the ground here most of the way. You can see the ball hit the bottom of the padding and just stayed there. And that allowed Eaton to reach third standing up. He might have gotten there anyway. You can see there's some kind of hose down that line. Yeah, must have got that kind of that hose. Two strikes to Jackson. Last six outs, four of them have come by a, a strikeout. Just missed the fastball, and that's what we we're talking about. 93, just off the outside corner, and I don't remember at any point in his first two years with the Twins, Velasco getting as high as 93. Generally, it was 91. One and two. Missing the outside corner at 94. The other thing that Ricky's done this year, when he's missing with his fastball away, he's missing off the plate. He's not missing over the plate. Now some of his breaking balls have stayed up and over the plate, but at least with his fastball, he's making sure that he holds that left side open enough that he's off the plate. Rounder right side, Bauer with a pickup, but there's nobody at first. Well, Ricky doesn't cover the bag. That's got to be instinctive for the pitcher. Anything hit to his left, he's got to break over. And Ricky knows it. Nothing that Santana could do. He was playing deep in the hole, so this is all on Ricky Nolasco. He did not continue on over. Bauer's got to cut that ball off. It's the only thing that kept Eaton from scoring. If that ball had rolled through to the second baseman, Eaton would have come in for third. Here's a brave first and third. Nobody out. The little things. That's another one of those little things. Difference makers in a ball game. Now their best hitter comes to the plate. No outs recorded. Playing back for a double play grounder, but Velasco misses with his first hit. Now how many little things have the White Sox done right just in the ball game? A couple nice plays by Eaton and Wright. Cabrera with a nice play in left. Navarro behind the plate, getting a wild pitch, throwing out Santana to complete the strikeout. And they're four for five with runners in scoring position. Time to uh, let you know 
about uh, May 9th being Scrubs Night at Target Field. Limited number of Scrubs Night theme tickets. The ticket packages are available. They include a game ticket and twin scrub bottoms. Go to twinsbaseball.com slash scrubs. Learn more about the Scrubs Night theme night offer. One and one to Abreu. Alaska had retired six men in a row after Abreu's home run leading off the third. See a Braille starting to dive out over the plate. He hit a pretty darn good off uh, breaking ball off the plate for a home run his last at bat. Ricky just stand away, 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 away. He hasn't done anything to keep him or prevent him from diving out there and trying to uh, move his feet at all. One and two. Jump foul back. The location of the home run that Abreu hit it was a slider. And it was on the corner away. It was a little too high, but it's about where the pitch to Castellanos yeah, was. To pull last. that ball the way he did, he's got to he's got to go out after. It. And if you're pitching him off the plate once in a while, they're not going to dive that much. One and two. Was at Wrigley Field last night. Saw Tim Deshays who used to pitch for the Twins. Now he's a broadcaster for the Cubs. And I'll never forget Deshays pitching to Mo Vaughn, who had all the body armor and all that. And Deshays was left absolutely defenseless because Mo Vaughn would lean over the plate. Deshays had to be down and away. I mean, it, you know, one of those pitchers, one of those guys. He didn't throw hard. And uh, at least nowadays, hitters don't have as much body armor on as they used to. Two and two. Just missed the inside corner, tried to clip it with the brave. You could see right there what you were talking about. He almost leaned over the plate on it. Yeah, he's looking out over the plate because Ricky hasn't shown him anything off the plate. And Ricky tried to run this fastball in on the inside corner. You see where Suzuki's hitting or sitting. But the ball had too much tail and ran off the plate. You see the Braves head it moved forward about a foot. Runner goes and the pitch chopped to third. Plouffe looks at Eaton and fires the cross. And the Twins get it out. No run scores, but on the play, Jackson advances to second. Again, a timely starting of the runner by the White Sox. In that case, sending Jackson kept them out of a double play. Run would have scored, but the Twins, I think, would have taken the uh, two outs to give up one run at this point. Here's Frazier. Suzuki, Ploof, and Nunez on the mound with the base open. Well, they want to make sure that Nunez, Ploof, both wanting to hear it from Ricky and how they want to attack Todd Frazier. That runners at second and third with only one out. And that'll help position them. As to what he might be throwing. Let's bring the infield halfway in here. And we're going to try to get Eaton at home if they can. On the ground, they'll come home. Got it. Nice play by the shortstop Nunez with Frazier cracking his bat two away. That's why they play halfway. He plays just like that. Eduardo Nunez does a nice job. The ball's hit sharply right at him, but he has plenty of time. He makes a perfect throw back to Suzuki. Eaton, who can really fly, got a good jump, but easily out, out at home plate because 
they position the infield halfway. Two down, first and third. Contact play on, and he came home and ran into an out. And now Melky Cabrera. They're on the throw, Austin Jackson does go over to third base for the two outs. Things don't really worry about him now because one out and in the inning. Down and in ball one. And this is where Ricky's really got to focus. Melky Cabrera, Cabrera struck out his last time, doubled in the first inning. He's been a very good hitter off of Ricky Nolasco. 1 and 0 oh to Cabrera. A nice scoop by Suzuki, 2 and 0, oh, Laurie on deck. I think what Ricky's trying to do is get him out on the inner part of the plate. The double that Cabrera hit was up and away. And uh, Melky Cabrera will swing a lot of pitches inside, but he usually pulls them foul. Now Suzuki stepping out in front of the plate and giving the infielders some signals in case Todd Frazier takes off. Whether or not he's going to throw through or just hold the ball. They don't want a double steal here. Two and oh. Two and one. Now well, the Twins trying to get back in the game, and their comeback effort will get a big one. If Nolasco allows a leadoff triple to the fastest guy on the White Sox, and the White Sox won't score. Two and one. Is open, but in second base. Hey, he's got to be careful. He's already struck out Brett Lorry, the on deck, hit, on deck hitter, twice in this game. Squirted to left to base hit. Not hit well at all, but Cabrera gets his second. Big two out hit of the night, driving in a run, and it's six to four. That's a similar base hit that we see so much from Joe Mauer, just fighting it off his disc, firing it out to left field. He tried to get him in, get him out in, but the ball was just too hot. It wasn't underneath his hands. Barrow just one run. First and second, two down, and down Alaska going after Laurie. Strike on the outside corner. Score. Trevor picked his glove up, reached for it, and I think was pretty sure that he was going to make the catch. And it, not even sure he got a lever on. It. No, he did not. It looked like the ball went right through his glove. It's a ball that should be caught, even though it was hit hard. It will not go down as an error. It'll go down as a hit. And you've got to believe Trevor Plouffe is wondering what happened there. Target outside. The pitch was delivered inside, and Laurie hit the stuffing out of it. Look at Blue from the very left edge of your screen. So another big two out hit for the White Sox, and the lead is back to three. Alaska is so close to putting up a zero here after the leadoff triple. And now there are two on the board. The inning still not over. Oh, ball one. Seen with a single and a run scored, and a ground ball to third. Now there's going to be elect activity in the Twins bullpen. Huh? 
two and zero. Oh. Talk of it was. Talk already uh, quite a bit about the improved Chicago defense, and an important part of that is taking Garcia off the field and putting him in the DH spot. Garcia was their right fielder, and we've already seen Adam Eaton make a number of plays here tonight. It's been the story of the great start for the White Sox. Improved defense, particularly in the outfield, and Garcia not a part of that. Three and oh. Uh, Ricky's showing a little frustration on the mound right now. He's taking his time trying to regroup. But pitch count climbing. And a four pitch walk will fill him up for Navarro. Let's see if there's a trip to the mound here by Neil Allen just to end it is. Allen. Coming to the mound here to try to give Malasco a little bit of a breather. The Twins Flex Plan gives you the flexibility to choose your games and your number of seats. Choose in advance, even the day of the game. Don't plan. Flex Plan. Go to twinsbaseball.com slash flex or call 800 33 Twins to learn more. Late umpire Todd Tishner will move things along. Gives us an opportunity. Tell you that the Twins are going to play a night game tomorrow, and then a day game Sunday. Are home for three games: Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday against the Orioles, then head back on the road. This team has won just two games on the road, and they need to start figuring out how to win games on the road in a hurry. Here is Navarro, a game-breaking situation. Bases loaded, two down. Hook foul, strike one. I promise you that little pep talk from Neil Allen was all about look at you just need to record another now out. This game's not over even though it's been a frustrating one for Ricky. He just wants to reassure him he's picked well enough that he could have better results and needs to get an out. Drop to the right side. That ball skipped to Mauer. He'll make the play and the White Sox leave the bases full. But a couple of big two out hits, two more runs for Chicago. A 28 pitch inning for an Alaska and the lead is back to three. Sox leading seven to four. Minnesota Lottery would like to remind Twins fans at home games: bring your circle me signs, and if you get circled, you can find yourself in the Minnesota Lottery's winner's circle, where you can win hundred dollars worth of lottery scratch-off tickets, courtesy of the Minnesota Lottery. Well, give our uh, best wishes as you look at Zach Putnam. He'll be the next Chicago pitcher. His numbers uh, 
solid. The Chicago bullpen very good. We want to pass along our very best wishes to assistant to, to the general manager, a friend of uh, all of ours, but particularly for Terry Ryan, Larry Corrigan, a couple of nights ago while scouting for the Twins in Oklahoma, suffered a stroke. And, uh, Larry is uh, recovering. He's stabilized, and we wish him very, very best. It's, uh, easy to get caught up in. Wins and losses, particularly when there are so many more losses than wins. But uh, pretty serious matter regarding Larry Corrigan. We hope that uh, Larry recovers quickly and completely. He's been with the organization a long time. The young Hope Park takes ball one. He has two singles, and two runs scored, and a strike. Park singles in each case, second inning and fourth inning, came with two outs and the base is empty. And in each case, his base hit triggered. Uh, a run scoring inning, one in the second and two in the fourth. And swing and a miss, and it's one and two. Well, Matt Latos finishes his game with five innings pitched, allowing seven hits, four runs all in. And Zach Putnam will take over. A little bit of a lead to work with now, three run cushion. Sure didn't look like five runs were going to be enough with Latos on the mound and now seven are on the board with Putnam on the board. Well, again, part of what is improved with the Chicago White Sox, White Sox team overall is their bullpen. And being able to piece it together, Robin Ventura feels like he's got a little bit better tools to work with. Drill to right center field and deep. This ball is caught in the gap by Austin Jackson. What a catch by the White Sox center fielder. Long way to run for Austin Jackson. But the way he timed his leap up against the wall is what separates the great center fielders. They know exactly where that wall is, how many steps on the warning track they'll take. You can see again the power that Young Ho Park has. Ball down and in. He's lifting it all the way out there towards right center. But a great play. Improved defense again for the yeah. Chicago White Sox. All three outfielders have made an extraordinary play mm -hmm. to keep the White Sox in front here. Arcee with a walk and a home run. Seen actually two plays by Eaton Cabrera with a nice running catch just uh, in fair territory, barely in the left field corner. Now this catch by Jackson. 1 0 to Arcee. 2 0. We enjoyed it last year. We felt the Twins' uh, outfield defense had taken great strides forward with Hicks and Buxton in center. Rosario played really well in left. Corey Hunter didn't have the range he once did, but he was kind of a stabilizing force. Yep, perfectly timed, and he ran into the padding too, instead of the chain link fence. <laughs> There's paddings on that pole right there, but the pitcher liked it. He's drawn two walks here. That'll bring up Suzuki, who's got two singles. But they're not going about business. Too efficiently here. He gives up a long out to Park on a two strike pitch. And he wants Arcia on four. Suzuki with an RBI single into the right field corner and then a solid single to center in the fourth. High and tight. Putnam pitched an inning and a third last night in that marathon game against the Red Sox. Suzuki having a good night behind her at the plate with the bat in his hand. Two for two. He's hit the ball hard both times. They put it in the air. Navarro with the catch. Once 
tried to bunt for hits twice, both times it's resulted in and out. Two down. Let's find Audra Martin in her hometown of Chicago. <laughs> hitting coach Tom Bernanski about why Eddie Rosario has found himself in a bit of a sophomore slump and he said the first thing he had to get Eddie to realize is what other teams see in him when he's at the plate. His tendency to swing at everything isn't a secret anymore so he pulled out the heat map of the pitches that he's swinging at and he gave it to Eddie and said here it's all right here these teams see this they know how to attack you and until you clean up the strike zone they're going to keep pitching you that way. From there he said the other thing is Eddie has to keep his head still and his body quiet but he said it's kind of difficult for a guy like Eddie who's an emotional guy it's it's difficult when you're trying to do too much he said that emotion can be a great thing at the plate but for Eddie he's got to find balance guys thank you Otter. the impression everyone got about Rosario last year is just kind of a happy go lucky carefree guy but as his slump has continued this is the anniversary of his major league debut here are the numbers he's put up Batting average okay, power is okay, but look, 18 walks and 140 strikeouts. Well, I think Audrey did a good job. Bruno nailed it, absolutely nailed it. That's exactly what is happening. Teams know. That's what's unbelievable about, about Major League Baseball is if there's a weakness, it'll, it'll be exposed, and then every team in the league will try to address that weakness. In a nutshell, why would you throw Eddie Rosario a strike if he's swinging at balls? If he's swinging at pitches out of the strike zone, yeah. two strikes. Power still there. He's shown that with the three home runs this year. Put in out of the strike zone. Rosario strikes out and that leaves RC at first base. And we head to the bottom of the six with the White Sox up by three. Beautiful night here in Chicago. You can kick off the youth baseball and softball season with a free clinic Saturday at the Prairie Island Sports Complex. The clinic is open to boys and girls ages 6 to 12, interested in learning basic tips and skills from Minnesota Twins community coaches. No pre registration required, which is a good thing since it's tomorrow. Visit FoxSportsNorth.com, click on upcoming events for the details. Tyler Saladino will lead things off. The Twins going to their bullpen. Ricky Nolasco out after five. Now it's Michael Tonkin's turn. See the numbers from Michael this year. He's pitching now in his 13th game. Seven runs allowed by Nolasco. Five of them earned. It will be Saladino and Jackson in the same. Saladino squares and takes ball one. Twins bullpen is in a curious situation here tonight. Once word was leaked that 
Both Tommy Malone, who was the long reliever, and probably wouldn't have been available tonight anyway, since he threw over 50 pitches two nights ago in Houston. Both Malone and Casey Feen have been put on irrevocable waivers. And then there's a waiver period, and then you go from the bottom of the standings to the top. And if a team claims either one of those guys, there's a ball drill, just foul, just landed. Far from the feet of third base umpire Brian Knight in foul territory. If say, you know, pick a team, any team, Angels. Uh, let's just mention the Angels again. For Tommy Malone, or for that matter, Casey Fiend, they'd have an opportunity to pick the player up, and then they're gone. But they're still here. Into the right field corner, and Sano watches it drift back into the seat. So yeah. you're, you're left in a curious spot if you're the manager because these players are on waivers and someone may have put in a claim already for them. We'll find out at 1 o'clock tomorrow. They are here and technically available. I don't think Paul Mahler would prefer to use either one of them tonight. So we have a foul back. Well, it's supposed to be kind of a hush hush thing. The players typically don't find out about it, although it's. The information world we live in now, it's probably easier today than it ever was. But it puts everybody in an awkward position. Teammates look at them differently. Players are kind of wondering those two guys have to be. Ball hit to Sano for the catch. One more. Talking with a long time scout. He's stopped by the coach for a visit today. I was asking about that. Of course, if you're sending a player through waivers, all the other teams, general managers, are aware that the player is being waived, and then he might call the scouts to say, "Hey, if you're uh, in Minnesota or in Chicago, you want to check out Casey Feet. Maybe they were in Houston. Uh, see how he looks and all that." The ball hit to center, and coming in, then going back, Rosario makes the catch for out number two. And in this day and age, it is impossible to keep a secret. <laughs> Two down, a couple of outfield flies for Tonkin and now Austin Jackson. Jackson with a walk and a run scored in the first, and a single and a run scored in the fifth. Well, the White Sox have done some little things in this game to put them in front. And it continues to be a problem for the Twins that they aren't doing the little things sometimes that they need to do. There are certain times you just have to tip your hat to the opposing pitcher. He's done a great job. And defense is something that I think everybody expects to be solid day in and day out. That's something you can do is play good defense. Hitting and pitching kind of come and go. Most of the difference in this game, the, the result of a first inning error that led to two runs. Strike on the outside corner, one and two. So, with Malone's status uh, in limbo, to say the least, Michael Tonkin is back in a long relief role here. As the Twins hope he can pitch maybe a couple innings. Down and away, and it's two and two. Yeah, it's the bottom of the six, so I don't think it's going to be any more than two innings for Michael. It may only be one. Third start in a row, though. Lifted to short and right. Sonel comes in. Third game in a row where no twin starters throw the pitch in the sixth inning.
Sox still up front 7 4. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. New pitcher for the White Sox will be left hander Zach Putnam. No, nope, Zach Putnam was in. This oh, is Zach, Zach, Duke. Zach Duke. I mean, you got your Zach. I got the I got the first <laughs> word right. Zach Duke will come in and he'll face switch hitter Danny Santana, right-handed hitter Eduardo Nunez, and then Joe Mauer. Duke has kind of come in as a one-inning guy. There's a couple left-handers. 17th appearance already. So Santana, switch hitter, but he's just had just five at bats as a right-handed batter, and he's 0 for five with three strikeouts. Strike one. Two years ago, when Santana hit 319, it was one of the few bright spots of an otherwise disappointing season. He hit well from both sides of the plate. To the glove of Duke. And put first out. And that'll bring up Nunez. Nunez has hit the ball hard twice. A line out to in right field in the third, and then he drilled a double to the gap. In left center in the fifth. He's in the lineup primarily because of his offense. He's done a great job this season, and that continued here tonight. Double and scored a run in the fifth. Some of the guys. They're weird in some respect. Another bunt attempt. This one, thankfully, over the screen popped up again. But uh, uh, inspiring in other you know, aspects because you were a kid at one time, and now all of a sudden you wake up, blink your eyes, and you're on the mound facing those same guys that you really aspired to be like. So that was pretty insp inspirational. Two and two to Nunez with one out in the seventh. Down sidearm and he gets a strike out. Two down. Duke changed his delivery a little bit there and got Nunez to swing a bit. One of the guys that will show you different arm slots. This time he comes complete the sidearm. Fox tracks presented by Carrier. Two down and here's Bauer. Bauer 0 for 3. Side. Four, and Duke has a very quick, clean one, two, three, seven inning.
story of the game again with the White Sox jumping out in front early. Alfie Cabrera gets it going for the Sox, and you can just see the balls are flying all over early. Pitchers having a tough time containing either one of these ball teams in this game. Seven four White Sox as we enter the bottom of the second inning. Bad crash. <laughs> are they still going? <laughs> 16 hits, 11 runs. Here's Abreu in a home run. Third inning. That was one of the loudest bat cracks we've had here tonight. Strike one. Abreu, Frazier, and Cabrera facing Michael Dunn. Still 79 degrees here. This has had the feel of a midsummer game. This ball hit high, fairly deep to center. Rosario's out there tonight after the injury to Escobar, and he makes the catch on the way. Since the Twins have had Santana and now Rosario out in center, maybe it's worth mentioning that Byron Buxton has done quite well in Rochester after a slow start, hitting over 300, hit a home run in his first at bat tonight. Talked with Darren Mastroani, who played next to Buxton in center field in Rochester, of course, was called up today. He said, Yeah, they had a lot of fun in the outfield. Mastroani in left, Buxton in center, Kepler in right. Says, you know what? We didn't give up many base hits. All three of them can run like the wind, and they covered a lot of ground. Teams are hopeful that Buxton and Kepler will be up here for good soon. Inside the ball. You and I were talking here pregame about the state of the Twins right now. I thought you made a great point. That the next time they bring up Byron Buxton, they just hope they never have to send him back again. Yeah. Went through that last year under different circumstances. He was called up because of injury, but then got sent down. This year, the opening day center fielder. One and two to Todd Frazier. Michael Tonkin now with a 2 2 count. He's retired all four batters on four outfield flies. Typically, that's not a good idea in this ballpark, particularly when it's as warm as it's been. Ouch. That <laughs> awful, awful. Wonderful sound. sound. The best sound in the game if you're on the mound. <laughs> Two down. Well, here's how busy the Twins were after the humiliating defeat at Houston the other night. Urban Santana has been reinstated. He'll start tomorrow. John Ryan Murphy will try to get his uh, hitting going in Rochester. Darren Mastroani's contract was selected. Ryan O'Rourke, J.R. Graham designated for release or assignment. Those made necessary because Mastroani wasn't on the 40 man roster. And then the Wants and uh, Tenham also needed to be added to the 40 man roster. Driven foul, strike one. Oh my. That was not a uh, gold glove caliber play out there by the ball man. No harm, no foul. One strike to Cabrera. And now a base hit to center. Cabrera's third hit of the ball game. This one at least came with the bases empty with two outs. The other hits came with two outs and then on. He's driven in three runs. The fastballs that he's seen out over the plate, he's hit hard. He's been pitched primarily in by both. Dickie Velasco and Michael Tonkin. And Tonkin left that one out over the plate. And Melky hit a rocket back up the middle. Lori, the batter. Drilled to left. And Tonkin exasperated. He can't locate his pitches very well here. He retired the first five batters and now he's given up a couple of two out hits. I think that's considered T ball right there almost. He set it on the tee. It's right over the middle of the plate. That was Paul Lind right there at Hollywood Squares. He was always the center square, wasn't it? I mean, that was Paul Lind. You know how old you have to be to remember <laughs> Hollywood Squares? Was it Paul Lind? And then he succeeded Charlie Weaver, right, who was the center square on Hollywood Square. You don't remember? I, you know what? I don't. I, I, was that a show? 
Michael talking out. Pitching change with two gone in the seventh. Here in the bottom of the seventh, Target Field Suites are available for single game rental for groups of 16 to 150 plus. Enjoy a climate controlled experience and a fantastic view of the Twins game with food and beverage included. Learn more at twinsbaseball.com slash groups or call 833 Twins. Schedule your suite at Target Field. Fernando Abad coming in. Even though it's a right handed hitting Avasail Garcia who will hit. The bod's been effective against both righties and lefties, and he needs to get this righty out. The bod has been absolutely great for the Twins this year. Still does not have an ERA. And uh, I think this is just a case where you keep this guy on track. You give him the inning or the out or the outs to keep him sharp because he has been very sharp for the Twins. Right handers hitting 231 against them, six hits, 26 at bats. Left handers have yet to get a hit against them, 0 for 13. And it looked like Tonkin was kind of running out of gas, but he wasn't able to locate anymore. We got four fly ball outs, a busted back rounder, and then two sharp singles, and now it's 2 and 0. Eight and twenty start would tell you the season so far has been an abject failure, but within that there are some individuals who have you know, done their part, and Abad is one of those. Might be the bright spot out of the bullpen this year. That and Ryan Presley. Two and zero. Oh. Big man to get here with the Twins already down by three, and there's a strike. Abad had. Uh, to make the club on a make good contract out of spring training, he was added to the 40 man roster. Two and one. And now three and one with Navarro on deck. 18 hits for the two teams, and 11 of them have come with two outs. Laurie with sharp singles against Tonkin. And now three and one from a bye. Slow breaking ball. And you can't blame Garcia if he's standing up there waiting for a fastball and he gets something that wouldn't get a speedy kick. You can sit on that dish and still be out in front. <laughs> you had one of those too, didn't you? Yeah, it wasn't quite that slow, but. Three and two now the runners will take off. And time call to the plate. Suzuki did not quite get what Abad wanted there. There was a sign 
given. There was a series of signs given there. And Kirk can't remember which one it was that he just started because he never nodded, never gave an indication that that's the one I want. So he's just going to call time out and go through another sequence of pitches. Doesn't want to get crossed up as a catcher. Slow breaking ball, 68 miles per hour. Who knows if things were different, this might have been a spot where Casey Fiend would be brought in, or maybe Fiend would have been brought in in the sixth inning. Well, I think the Twins would prefer to not use Casey until his status is clarified by tomorrow. Full count again. Back to back changeups by Abad. And a fastball just missed the corner. And they're loaded up now for the honor and Abad. After throwing a couple of upper 60s pitches, he figures that Garcia would be frozen by a fastball and Abad just missed the down and away corner. Navarro's 0 for 3, two ground balls and a strikeout. He's trying to stay in this game. The White Sox left the bases full in the fifth. There's a strike on the outside corner. Corner and Navarro looks away in disbelief. I've seen Navarro wear glasses. I think he's worn them in the past, but they're a different look. Yeah. A bot can't find the ball and it's right at his feet. He was looking up in the air. He was looking east, west, north, and south, and he nearly stepped on the ball. That's just a tough position for a pitcher. Ball comes back at him, and he has it in his glove, and he thinks the ball ricochets upwards. And he's looking all over the mound, all over the infield, and it's right, literally, like you said, at his feet. It's so surprising he didn't step on it and turn his ankle. Three hits and a walk now after the second out, and the lead is back to four. Saladino with a chance to break the game wide open. Yeah, those are the type of glasses you wear if you're going to the library. Dino with a single and a couple of fly balls to Sano in right. Base is still loaded. The Twins seeing the White Sox start to pull away here in the seventh. One and one. For the Twins, the defense kind of flat foot and lethargic in the outfield. And the ball base hit up the middle. Fourth two out hit for the White Sox, and this one will score two. And it's 10 to 4. Saladino does a great job of waiting and waiting and waiting and doing exactly what your hitting coach wants you to do drive the ball right back up the middle 
That was a great at bat for Saladino. And White Sox have kind of blown this one open. Just a soft little floater in there, but look at he never ever offered anything with his lower body, and that's pitcher perfect swing. White Sox with four singles and a walk. Two of these runs charged to Michael Tonkin, and for the first time this year, the bot is charged with a run. He came in as a ball hacked to third. Move goes to the bag, and that ends the inning. Three more for the White Sox, and they're leading 10 4. Awkward saying this, uh, representing a team that's on the verge of going 8 and 21, but the Tigers got some problems losing tonight. Now, four in a row, they've been uh, swept twice in two different series by the Cleveland Indians. And the Indians, uh, the opponent in one of two series wins that the Twins had. And the Tigers are on a tough road trip playing in Texas, and then they go into Washington and play the Nationals, and they're a pretty good team themselves. Miguel Sano will lead things off. Nick Jones, the new Chicago pitcher, as Robin Ventura is going to try to patch the end of this game up one inning at a time with very likely four different relievers. Matt Latos wasn't very good, at least that's how I would characterize his effort. He fell behind hitters, gave up almost all of a four run lead. 1 0 to Sano. Wasn't his best day, but it was a good. Great for him to pitch. Look at that play by Todd Frazier. Sano retired. He's hit the ball on the button twice. And the uh, White Sox knew they were getting a good player in Todd Frazier. I don't know that they realized he was that good defensively. He's made that play on his backhand side about eight or ten times already this year. Let's see the replay again. Ball was hit hard, but he's able to get to the ball and then. See the ball into his glove. Plenty of time to turn and throw across the diamond. Just two errors on the year. That's a pretty good addition for a ball club that needed defense to improve. Finish the series at Target Field with a sensational diving play to end the game. One strike to Plouffe, 0 for 3. 0 for 12 since his return to the lineup, but now two strikes. Tried to bunt his way aboard in the fourth and looked like a good bunt when he laid it down, but. Lados made a nice play, took his time, threw him out. You get in the box against Nate Jones, you better be ready. He can bring it. He's throwing the ball in the 90s, high 90s. Two hopper, easier play for Frazier. Perfect throw across, two down. 
Harsoup.com trivia. And I'm going to go with Justin Morno. Oh, Joe Mauer. Never close. The average is going down. <laughs> All tonight, four nights so far. Yeah, tonight's game's not going well. Young Hope Park has had a very good night at the plate. Two two out singles, two runs scored. And he hit a blast to right center field that Austin Jackson made a superb play on. Not been a good game for the Twins beyond the score, 10 to 4. That's bad enough, but there's just been some adversity in the field again. Costly error. Bob knocking the ball down and his inability to find the ball led to three runs that have help open up the game here. And there's the injury to the starting shortstop Eduardo Escobar tonight. A groin injury. That took him out of the game whether he'll be able to play again in this series response. Yeah. It needs to be seen. 2-0 to Park. Oh! Park hit by a pitch. Clocked at 96 miles per hour. Oh, that ball hit him. Oh, off the ripcage man. It was up and in. And from up here, it looked more frightening than what it was. I thought it was up I thought it was up higher. Well, I did too. His face. Yep. Park has reached with two outs. Frightening moment. Appears that he is okay. It'll be interesting to see how teams pitch him in Korea. He was in the chief status, and you know what that's like. It's you know the Riptons of the world very rarely saw pitches up and in. Whether that should be the case or not. The premier players don't seem to get. The Ripping saw a lot more than they see today. Yeah. I promise you that. One of the great ironies of Kirby Puckett's situation is teams just didn't pitch him up and in that often. And then Dennis Martinez had one run up and in. And Kirby himself said, well, I was cheating a little bit on it. Caught him in the left cheekbone. One and one to Arcia. Two walks and a long home run to left. Swing and miss. And Park steals second. Navarro threw down, but Saladino wasn't really in, in the neighborhood of the base. And he gave him a stolen base. One and two to Arcia. Gets the count clarified with Todd Tishner. Swing on a breaking ball down the end. Garcia strikes out to end the end.
job because Trevor May has done a nice job. Eight walks, but three of those came in uh, one uh, outing. He's been uh, he's been really good and seems to be getting better. I was going to say it's uh, it's the fact that you look back in the recent past and things have improved. He was a little erratic early in the year. I thought he was trying to overthrow to some degree, but he's had good command and uh, he's done a great job. And he can still throw it hard. 96 that fastball right there. He has a three pitch mix and he brought that into a uh, into spring training swing and miss. Change up breaking ball in the 90 mid 90s fastball. And a bid for a starting spot that never materialized for him. Two strikes. Pitch right away. It, it brings up an interesting conversation. Trevor May, I'm not really sure how much of an opportunity he had to make of starting rotation in spring training. But it was not because of what he couldn't do, it's because of his value in the bullpen. Paul Mahler has really gained a lot of confidences in this guy, and I don't know, maybe he could become a closer for this ball club at some point. He's got that kind of stuff. I still maintain that the Twins bullpen is uh, erratic as it's been. Um, had things set up the way it, it was intended, could have been a strength of this team. If you'd had Glenn Perkins uh, pitching the way that he pitched in the first half last year, made the All Star team, was nearly perfect in saves. Jepson was really an addition from where the team was in the first half last year. Then you have May, Presley, in a bot. Pretty good. The components were there for a good bullpen. Then Perkins got hurt. And now Abreu is hit by a pitch. And May looks off and when warnings will be issued. Abreu questioning May. And this is all in response to what happened to Byung Ho Park. Here come the benches. I think this maybe is what this Twins team needs. Well, the benches, it's interesting. The White Sox bench was out to. Headed in the direction of Abreu, I think as much to keep him in the game and make sure nothing happened to him. Well, here's the setup for you folks that might just be wondering what this is all about. Last half inning, Nate Jones threw one that ended up hitting Young Ho Park, and of course, the White Sox think this might be a retaliation pitch. Well, it might be. Who cares? It's part of baseball, and you've got to accept the fact that hey. If Guy plunks our guy. We might just have to move somebody else off the plate. Now, let me explain something else. Abreu has been pitched away, away, away all game. She so hasn't had seen anything in, and maybe he was moving in a little bit and when didn't react. Uh, Trevor May could throw the ball in the mid 90s, so there's not a lot of reaction time there. Everybody trying to settle down Abreu, and I just find it interesting that the. The white charge out of the Chicago dugout was toward their player, not toward Trevor May or even the Twins bench. I just think that they were concerned that here they are and they got the best record in the league. They wanted to make sure that he didn't fly off the handle here, right in the ribs, which. Headed towards Abreu. And there are a few Twins players there, including Park, in the middle of it all. Well, if you don't understand as a player what this is all about, you know, right now Robin Ventura is going out and, and probably saying, why is my guy getting warned? Both, I'm sure both managers were warned about the next time a guy throws at somebody. He's saying, you know, we can't go ahead and throw at a guy. Nate Jones didn't mean to hit him, but he did. And now Ventura is tossed. His team is up by six runs. Foolish time to get thrown yes, out of the game. Is. Very foolish. And the umpires are mandated yes. to do exactly what they did. Exactly. Player got hit one half of an inning. There was some retaliation by in the other half of the inning. And if the umpires don't do what they did here and issue warnings, then they hear about it tonight and all day tomorrow.
Tony La Russa was great at uh, this part of the game. He felt that one of the opposing teams threw at one of his guys. It was almost mandatory that his pitchers get two guys. May, to his credit, I think, stayed near the slope of the mound and didn't take a step toward Abreu. Didn't even make a response. Right. And uh, I just, again, the White Sox players rushed out not to confront any of the twins, certainly not May, because they ran right past him. They're trying to keep Abreu in the game. The problem with this warning system now is Trevor May can't afford to go in at all. Now, there's a pop up. Blue for call for it. Two outs. Two away. But if it, just say that Todd Fraser was susceptible in, and you're a pitcher in this modern day business where warnings are given, and you got to try Todd Frazier in, and you miss off the plate, and you catch his knee, or you catch his pants, or you catch his shirt, you're thrown out of the game. And that's part of your repertoire to get a guy out. Well, because nobody got hurt, I hope I don't get in trouble. I was glad to see what I saw. Nate Jones throws every bit as hard as Trevor May, and that was a fastball that came in and hit him somewhere in the upper half. It looked like Abreu got hit in the lower half or right above the belt. I'll line. be honest with you, Dick. I don't think either pitcher was thrown at either really? one of them. You don't think no. Trevor May did? Okay. No, but I'm glad he did. And I, you know, I, I, I really believe that Abreu, because he's been pitched away, away, away the whole game, was not even thinking the ball in there. One and one. Now a strike on the outside corner. But I don't understand Ventura's response because no. if the umpires had not done what they did in warning both teams, then, then I don't know if they'd be fined or not, but they certainly would get a tersely worded email from whoever is in charge of umpires. Down and away. Oh, you nailed that. It, they have to. It's part of their system. They just don't want the game to get out of hand. I mean, I pitched in an era where you might see five guys get hit in the game. And four of them on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Taking low, and it's three and two. And I think not only the Twins players, you saw Nunez talking with Abreu, trying to settle him down a little bit. He's one of the game's better players. And as you had identified him before, the best hitter on this White Sox team. They don't need him uh, being suspended. A little flare to the left and a base hit. And a throw coming to third base and the ball hitting the runner. And Cabrera thought about second base. He'll hold up. First and third, two down. And now Brett Laurie will hit. Laurie with a couple of hits his last two times up after two strikeouts to start his night. Side ball one. And I, I'm warning you, Trevor May will be asked about it. He will, I'm sure, say all the right things. The ball got away, didn't mean to do it, and all that. You can choose to believe him or not. Right? Because that's what he's uh, going to say. I'll say this on the air. There are seven guys that I got that I can consciously say right now that I didn't miss, but after the game, I certainly thought the ball might have slipped out of my hand. One and one. And strike one and two. And the hope is, of course, that the way things played out here, the bottom, top and bottom of the eighth inning, and the warning, and the players ran out on the field, all that came back, that there'll be no carryover or anything tomorrow. More importantly, I just hope Trevor May can get out of this inning yep. without a run score because you don't want it to affect the pitcher 
you, you really kind of find out what they're made of in these situations. You, you know, it's, there's a lot of guys that get all upset and kind of lose their game face when something like this happens. You just got to go back and almost be more of a bulldog. Ball missing, and now it's two to two. about the location of that pitch that was too good and he knows it now he's got two strikes maybe he can fool him with a breaking ball get him to chase but Lori will chase down and away missed down the way at 96 to full time it was a matter of that game tomorrow and everybody had an off day yesterday would you rather may not have to burn up too many pitches tonight because you might want to bring it back tomorrow absolutely full count to Laura on her first to take off with two out and there's the end of the inning a spirited inning to say the least Abreu got drilled by a mid 90s fastball but no damage done on the scoreboard at least and we head to the ninth inning. The White Sox in front has been another bad night for the Twins as we head to the ninth inning. And Kurt Suzuki will lead things off for the Twins. Eddie Rosario will follow against Scott Carroll. Suzuki, Rosario, and Danny Santana. The Twins find themselves down six here going to the last inning. If they get six, it won't be the last inning. Strike one. Suzuki with a pair of hits tried to bunt his way aboard popped it up caught by Navarro tried to bunt for hits three times a ground out a pop out and a foul ball over the screen Ten foul two strikes. Baseball has done everything in the world to control no contact. 
taking away slides. They protected the catchers. They basically prevented oh, well, pitchers from throwing at guys. They don't want that. And yet, saw the energy in the crowd. Yeah, the crowd gets into that stuff. And then Ventura fanned the flames by getting yeah, uh, ejected. Yeah, being silly. I would imagine his contention was that May should have been tossed right away, but generally, Why? players aren't tossed unless he or until there's been anybody, and there weren't warnings issued prior to that. So what he's saying is, we can throw at one guy and plug somebody, so you should warn both sides after we hit a guy. <laughs> That's not right. One and two. Two and two. And tonight, Twins haven't had a lead. They were behind five to one and got to within five four. But then the White Sox uh, added two runs in the fifth, three in the seventh. All of them, all those extra runs scoring on two out hits. And that will be the end of the night. Should be the end of the night for Carroll, isn't it? Nope, they're saying it was an off speed pitch and not intentional. So Carroll hits Suzuki. Suzuki being a pro. Didn't do anything. Now there would be guys that might scream and yell and get things all started again. Kurt just rolls his hip, takes one off the buttocks, and uh, shoot, that's the least of his problems. He's had more, more aches and pains blocking balls than he's ever going to get there. So what do we think that was a change up and because it was a change up that the uh, home plate umpire didn't dream, deem it intentional and now a line drive from Abreu with the catch Suzuki's double off two down. Right now for what's next brought to you by Century Link to face Matt, Matt Latos tonight for whatever reason they absolutely owned Chris Sale last year they'll face him tomorrow and get their second look at Jose Quintana. On Sunday. Brought to you by Century Link. Here's Danny Santana. Irvin Santana will start tomorrow for the Twins against Sale. Irvin did not go on any rehab. So he'll kind of go out there cold turkey. One and oh. Two of them. Santana started in center field and then was moved to the infield, taking over at second base. And Eduardo Escobar left the game with a groin strain. Two and one. White Sox had lost a couple of games in a row. One out away from win number 20. The White Sox at 20 and 10, the best record in the American League. And the Twins on May 6th have already lost their 21st game of the year. Tom Hannum in this road trip started on an encouraging note as the Twins beat Dallas Keuchel, but now another road losing streak extending to three games tonight.